Hi, I'm Colin McClive. I'm the director for the U.S. insurance industry here at Microsoft, and I'm here with my good friend Steve McGinnis, who's the senior director for insurance at Avanad. And we're here to talk about a really relevant set of topics that are uh, uh, happening in the U.S. Uh, property and casualty uh, insurance industry today around conversational bots and insurance. And one of the reasons we're doing this is that we've seen um, a lot of instances over the past couple of years where uh, the, the use of automated technologies or conversational uh, agents in, in uh, claim situations in particular have really, have really risen in, in uh, not only scope but necessity. And we're seeing a lot of interaction between uh, customers and the, the, the insurance companies themselves where the introduction of this technology makes a lot of sense both for the customer to increase customer satisfaction and get them through difficult situations, but also for the insurance carrier themselves. We see a lot of uh, potentials for this technology and a lot of adoption already. And one of the things that we're seeing in the, the industry in particular and, and more broadly is that over the, uh, you know, we're anticipating over the next few years, we're going to see about a, a 55 to 60 percent increase in the number of conversations that happen between customers and their insurance uh, carriers that are happening in an automated way. And there are a few reasons for this. A lot more people are using their cell phones, they're, they're on social media, and they're messaging as well. In particular, with millennials, we're, we're noticing and we're anticipating that that use of the, the, the cell phone technology and messaging is the preferred means of interaction. So in, in the cases where interacting with an insurance carrier, for instance, around an auto accident or a flood situation like we're experiencing right now, um, the use of that technology becomes really important. As well, it's also important to have the, the, the nature of that conversation be able to be passed to a human being at an appropriate time. So the introduction of the technology as an opening part of the conversation, but then where appropriate and where necessary to have a human being involved, because we are all human and it's always important for us to be involved, um, that, that's where the technology plays. So we can actually pass the entire context of, of the conversation, the messaged conversation, over to a human being at, at the right time. And with that... Thank you. So again, my name is Steve McGinnis, and thank you for the introduction, Colin. Yep. Uh, really happy to be here today to talk about artificial intelligence, bots, cognitive services, in particular, how they play into uh, the insurance scenarios. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. We hope to show you a few things here today that uh, hopefully will be exciting and interesting and unique. Uh, but first, I kind of wanted to set the context when we talk about artificial intelligence. What do we really mean? Um, you know, we've, we've been talking about bots and cognitive services for, for almost 50 years now. Uh, but it's kind of gotten to the point, sort of a tipping point, if you will, where we're able to use this in a way that we haven't used it before. So when we talk about AI, we, I have this little slide up here. We talk about it being a constellation of technologies uh, that allow machines to sense and comprehend and act and learn. So these are all very important concepts that uh, it's not just uh, something out of a box, not just a single technology. It's a conglomeration of multiple things like cognitive services, like machine learning, big data, uh, CRM type systems, all sorts of things will connect together and act in a way that hopefully we can demonstrate shows that not only can these technologies become um, more effective and efficient for business operations, but also put a very human side to you know, what is oftentimes a very difficult situation for customers to be in in dealing with the, um, with the companies, with the carriers. With that, you can call and maybe talk a little bit about the, the types of services in a little more detail. So one of the things that, we, that Microsoft has done a lot of work in over, over the years is around cognitive services, and, and particularly around speech, language, computer vision, knowledge, and, and search. And one of the things that we've done, I mean, uh, with working with Avanade, we've been working together, what, four years now? Four years, yeah. Um, Avanade's done an extraordinary amount of work around the claims adjuster experience and made it so that it's a really modern work interface, but also a, a workflow-based uh, uh, scenarios. And so what we've done most recently in the past year is actually connected all the great work that Avanade's done around claims adjuster desktops and the experience with the conversational agents and, and the bot technology. So where this becomes important is in things that we've done around speech, for instance. So our ability to understand uh, either text or voice 
coming through a device like a smartphone, we can actually uh, understand the nature of the conversation uh, as well as um, uh, languages. So there's uh, translation capabilities that are built into the, into the technology um, um, automatically. And we can be working, like I could be working in English or Spanish or French uh, or Portuguese, the language I'm learning now. Uh, I could be working in one of those languages and Steve could be conversing in, in, um, in, in English at a call center and the translation capabilities would happen automatically. I want to interject that, I mean, this, this is some, some very powerful stuff. You know, as, as the world becomes increasingly global, the notion of having, you know, single languages for, for your business uh, becomes harder and harder to imagine. Uh, I mean, even, even in North America, you know, the percentage of people speaking uh, non-English as their primary language is, is increasing dramatically. So having this capability is, uh, is exciting. Yep. Um, what I think is even, uh, well, more interesting, equally interesting, is that not only can you talk about different languages though, but as you understand the context of the language, you think about sub-languages. So say the millennials versus you know, older generation, the, the word choices they use, the way that they speak. These are all things that can effectively be, well, for lack of a better phrase, translated to enable uh, you know, more natural, again, more human conversation. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's where we get into the capabilities around language and, and uh, natural language processing within, within the cognitive services. But also one of the things that's really exciting about this and that we've incorporated into the work that we're doing is around computer vision. So for instance, the ability to understand what's in a photo or a video, and in, in the situations we're talking about where there's an auto accident or there's a, a natural disaster that impacts the, the structure of a building, we can actually look at the content of a photo and understand not only the nature of, of the damage, but also the extent. Mm -hmm. So for instance, with an auto accident, we can take a picture of the automobile and the automobiles themselves and uh, through the technology and through um, what we've done with partners like Avanade, be able to actually make assessments about a repair or replace, the extent of the damage if it's a repair, and actually get uh, estimates uh, right up front and right at, right, at the time of the, right at the time of the accident. So these, are, these become really important in terms of the, you know, not only the, the, the experience, the, the, the experience that people have and their ability to resolve situations quickly, but also for the insurance carriers to actually work through these things in a very timely, effective way without adding a lot of cost to their, to their uh, operations themselves. Yep. And I think that, you know, those two points are, are extremely important. When we talk about bots, um, very often we talk in the context of let's, let's save some money or let's make things more efficient, let's capture the data. And that's all very true. Um, but what we want to, you know, show here today as well is that in addition to that, there's this, this aspect of, um, of making the bots, again, back to the word, human. It's, uh, it's making the, uh, the user experience something that is uh, more natural, more pleasant. And when we talk about situations where, um, you know, especially in insurance where a claim is being made, mm -hmm. more often than not, it's in a stressful environment. You know, the demo we're gonna show here today is around an automobile accident. Um, but as Colin pointed out earlier, we've had a, a lot of, uh, you know, hurricanes and we've had a lot of flood damage. We've had a lot of people who have, been uh, you know, cast out of their homes in these very, very stressful times. Uh, the last thing in the world they want to do is sit down and fill out forms. And uh, so we can show here that through these technologies, combining them together, that you can actually make an experience that is better <laughs> in many cases than you could do otherwise simply you know, at scale. Uh, there's no way that your neighborhood um, claims adjuster can hit 30,000 people, you know, over a period of a couple of weeks. It's just, it's simply not possible. So um, we'll, we'll show you a few things that, uh, that you can do with this technology. Yeah. Um, so the demonstration that we're going to go through today, we're calling uh, roadside FNOL. So uh, first notice of loss. And this particular slide gives you kind of the, the, the sequence of events that we're gonna walk through. It, it starts out with an auto accident and in this particular demo, we, uh, we're actually using a uh, um, you know, little cell phone to, to emulate a car getting in an accident. So instead of actually crashing a car for everyone, or we're, you know, we'll shake a phone and we'll call that an accident. And so we go through these, uh, the sequence of steps here, as you can see on the screen. Uh, the first is anomaly detection. So in other words, uh, you're driving along, uh, doing what you normally do, 
And the phone, the bot, the cognitive agents is working on your behalf constantly in the background, uh, assessing how things are going. When it detects that something is wrong by means of, uh, let's say it's connected to the car, uh, an airbag goes off, mm -hmm. or there's a speed sensor or some other you know, uh, you know, crash sensor goes off, the application on your behalf recognizes there's a problem goes to uh, machine learning to figure out, is this is back into a pole? Is this something where there's gonna be some more serious acts that we need to get involved? And those decisions then drive different interaction scenarios. The second phase is after we've determined that there's a problem and we've contacted the driver, is we make sure that they're safe. So uh, we, we can make some assessments about the damage to the car, whether it's drivable or not, to make a recommendation to pull off to the side of the road where it's safe, uh, get out of the car if necessary, basically walking them through their safety. Only after that do we get into the actual policy. Uh, you know, I've just got in an accident. Uh, I'm a little nervous. I'm shaken up. Uh, what do I do now? You know, oh my gosh, it's been years since I've been in an accident. I forget, do I need the driver's license? Don't I need the driver's license? What do I need to do? So the bot then takes over the role of being the, uh, the agent or the, the, the claims adjuster, walks the user through the process, and because of the cognitive services, makes it much, much easier to do. So we're not asking them to type in uh, you know, a bunch of information. We're not asking them to remember their policy numbers. All of that we provide for them, and uh, we, we go through, and in this particular case, we have them snap a photo of the uh, license plate of the other car, snap a photo of the driver's license of the other car, and through the, um, the, uh, the visual services we have, we can actually extract that information, do things like VIN lookups, uh, and provide all that information that you would normally expect the user to be entering. We confirm that, uh, and then afterwards, when the, uh, the, the policy holder is a, you know, a little more comfortable, maybe they're at home, they're at work, uh, you know, they start to remember things. They say, gosh, you know, I, I know I've got uh, rental car coverage, uh, but I don't remember you know, how long it's for. So the bot then you know, keeps track of this. It's no longer just a single transaction. It remembers that you, know, you were in this accident. And it knows that when you're asking about your rental car coverage, that's because your car was just wrecked. Right. And it's going to be in the shop for three weeks, and you're going to need a rental car for three weeks. So these are all things that, if, if you notice, I've, it, we've gone through like three or four steps before we even talk about the insurance policy. We have minimal data entry, uh, and it really is about making the, the policyholder feel comfortable and helping them through the situation. But, and we'll also show this, that in the background, what have we done? We've captured a lot of very detailed information. We've uh, put together a very comprehensive packet for uh, adjusting the claim. Uh, we've put together all kinds of you know, fantastic information in an extremely efficient way so the carrier doesn't have to manually key this in. They don't have to worry about dealing with somebody on the phone and getting the spelling right and so forth. So it really is, you know, to go for a hackneyed phrase, a win-win scenario. And, and this is what we'd like to kind of show you next. Part of, of this is, is what I mentioned earlier, is that it's not a single technology. So in this demo, we're combining a number of things. We're combining machine learning, cognitive services, mobile technology, big data. Uh, what else have we got in there? We've got, some, we've got CRM in there, Dynamics 365, to kind of coordinate and, and address these things. Um, and you think about this, that even five, 10 years ago, if, if you went and said, hey, I want to get six different core technologies in my company, uh, you know, you'd be asked to kind of you know, rethink that and come back with a, with a little right. better plan. Right. But when we talk about doing this with the cloud and on the Azure platform, it becomes very, very possible. I can spin up uh, the services that I need at the size that I need it. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a two-year project to get each of these components in place. Um, from an Avanade perspective, this is something that's extremely important to us and to our clients uh, because, frankly, there's, there's less and less appetite for, for large, large projects. And uh, people are more interested in doing things in a very iterative, agile way, solving problems and expanding upon that. Yeah. And, and one of the things I like about this, too, is that the work you, you've done previously and the work we're doing now is actually bringing together not only, not only the deep understanding of the processes themselves, 
but the, the use of the various technologies. Yeah. So whether it's on the smartphone or whether it's on the, on the desktop or the tablet, you know, whether someone's in the field, the claims adjuster's in the field, or they're at a, at a desktop, it's really bringing all these technologies together. And it really does streamline the entire process. It, it's amazing. So now I'd like to switch over to, uh, to the demo, if we can get that switched over. Uh, and I'll walk you through um, a scenario. Colin and I will walk you through the scenario of, of how you might experience this if, if you got in an accident today on the way home from work, heaven forbid. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So um, I'll go ahead and start off. So the first thing that happens is, again, uh, if you remember on the slot, in the previous slide, um, we're driving along, and uh, in the system itself, and I use the word system rather than tool or software products, the system itself recognizes there's a problem. So here what we see is, is the, uh, the chatbot that has been uh, silently monitoring my driving in the background. Everything was, uh, was okay until it detected a problem. In this case, you know, the, the airbag went off, for example. And so it immediately comes back to me in a uh, voice response saying, hey, we've detected there's something wrong. Uh, do you need help? That's the first question. And, um, and it says at any time you can, dial not, you can have the, the bot dial 911. Uh, or you can ask the bot questions. But in the absence of that, if we respond and say, yes, okay, we've, we've gotten an accident, then it starts to take us through the process. So it says that, you know, based on the machine learning, we've noticed that there was an accident. It's not just a little fender bender, so there's probably gonna be some assistance needed. And so the first question is, you know, do we need medical assistance? Uh, if we select yes on here, uh, that'll automatically take us over to a, um, let's say, a, a phone ready to dial 911. For, for various reasons, we're not having the, uh, the, uh, the demo actually call 911, but we set it up so that you just have to say go and it goes. Uh, also, at the same time, uh, we have uh, pre-configured a number of people to contact. So, for example, if I get in an accident, you know, I might want my, my wife to know about this. I might want to let my son know so that uh, he's not waiting for me at school. Yep. And, and all this can be done, uh, you know, simply by saying, you know, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm in a situation, I need some help. Uh, the next step that we go through is, is safety. Are you safe? Are you in traffic? Can you, uh, can you get out of traffic? And only then, after all that's done, after we've said, you know, we've recognized there's a problem, we've called the first responders, we've uh, notified your contacts, we've made sure that you're safe, do we get into the process of, this is what we need to do now to help you on the claim process. So do you want to talk a little bit about this? Yep, so, I mean, this is, this is really great because not only has the, the application and, and working with the phone detected the, the instance of the, uh, the accident, but now again, it's responding in, in voice. So I had an accident recently and it would have been great to have something like this only because, you know, I was a little, uh, little confused as I got out of the car and just having this guidance of walking through things. First of all, that, that outreach of, hey, are you okay? Uh, do you need any, any medical assistance? And then letting people know um, was really, would, would have been really great to have. And so here, you know, as you can see, it starts to go through a step-by-step -step process. What do we need to do first? Uh, we need to go you know, speak with the drivers, get information. Right? Now, you know, and typically in these situations, you would have uh, you know, a little piece of paper and a pen, you have to scribble it down. Or you know, in more modern times, you might take your phone and you know, maybe you know, take a picture of something. Right. But we've actually, in this demo, we, we take this a step further. Um, we actually go through and instruct them to take a picture of the license plate, take a picture of the driver's license, take a couple uh, specific shots of the accident. And that enables us to do basically two or three things all at once. One is we can extract the license plate information so we can do VIN lookups and figure out, you know, who is this car, who is the owner, potentially even who has the insurance coverage on the other car. Uh, we can take a look at the driver's license to see if there are, you know, any particular issues. Uh, get addresses and phone numbers. Um, and then with the, uh, as Colin was alluding to earlier, we have the ability to, to take the, the image of the accident and do some, at least, at least today we can do rough assessment. Is this a total? Is this something where you know, it's easily repairable? Kind of what, what category does it fit in? And as, these, um, as the technologies develop and as the, uh, the systems we implement develop, 
uh, we're getting closer and closer to being able to actually say, yes, it's the right rear quarter panel, and we know that that's going to be about you know, $3,000 on your car and take two weeks to get done. All this before you know, the, the, the policyholder even knows that uh, you know, they've been in an accident. Right. Um, the, the bot is working on their behalf. So once we go through that process, uh, we ask you to take the photos. And, you know, finally, we get into the question of, you know, is there any other information? So the system itself has captured date, time, location. We've got the, the, the pictures that we extract the information from. But there's always something that, you know, you, know, you, you, you wish you could say that you could record. And uh, you always forget later on. So it's a... Uh, you know, I was minding my own business and suddenly there's a you know, blinding flash of light. And I don't know what that was. And, you know, whatever the situation was that, you know, you feel is important to, uh, uh, to record at that, at that time, it allows you to do that as well, uh, both in terms of speaking, in terms of uh, typing in the text, uh, and in terms of taking pictures. Okay. So here we are, three clicks and the claim has been started. Yep. Now, what's great, too, is that, is that this enables us to ask other questions. It's not just limited to this, this uh, flow of, of questions coming from the bot. So, for instance, um, I might be interested to know, am I going to lose my insurance? Is my, is my insurance policy going to be dropped? So we can, we can uh, type that in or, or speak it in. And, you know, that's one of the things that is of concern to people when they, they come out of it. Or they might want to know, how long is it going to take me to, to get a payment? Right? So we can, we can just ask about payments and, and see where things go with that. And again, these are, these are responses that have been pre-set up, but it's also, these are based on the typical questions that, that always come in to a, a claim center um, and that, that need to be answered by people. So, and you missed the best part. Which is? <laughs> Which is you don't have to ask the question the way that the claim center wants you to ask the question. No, that's very true. <laughs> that's right. And so that's the, you know, that's the beauty of the cognitive services. It understands the intent, not just the words. So uh, I might say, uh, how long do I have a rental car for? Or I might just say rental car. Or I might just say rental. Yeah. Uh, and over time, you know, the systems learn, they get better. And this is where we also get into factors where um, you know, different languages, different cultures ask the same question effectively in different ways. I mean, even between, say, North America and Canada, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether we're talking about you know, um, you know, policy fees or premiums or whatever the specific word is that people will use uh, are, differ. And again, you know, the last thing you want to do is say, well, you didn't use the right word, so we're not going to give you the answer. <laughs> and with this technology, it really does sort of break down those barriers and allow you to ask the questions in the way that it's meaningful to you yeah. to get the answers that you need. Yeah. And, and one other thing is that the technologies can really understand emotion. So if you're speaking at a high, high volume um, and you really need uh, uh, assistance from a human being, the, the technology can actually detect that and move the conversation over to a, to a real live human being. So super important stuff. Oh, super important. Yeah, I mean, just the, the notion of being able to, and, and you know, you, you can imagine that, uh, you know, some of these are not too hard to detect when somebody's getting a little testy, shall we say. <laughs> and, um, but, you know, Historically, we couldn't do anything about that. Yeah. You know, computer systems didn't know the difference between, uh, you know, help and all caps help. It, it, just, it, was, it was the same word as is a, is a text character. But now we can start to get the context and the inferences and, you know, the true meaning behind these and make some intelligent decisions about what to do. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, at scale. Yeah. <laughs> at scale. Yeah. At scale. So this becomes really interesting. Now, what's what's great about this is to how this technology connects to the, um, the claims adjuster and, and the call centers themselves. So the next part of this, we're actually going to show how what was just collected on the, that cell phone and passed into the insurance company actually gets passed over to the, the claims adjuster themselves. And how now with alerts on, on the screen and workflows that are predefined, they can actually look through, the claims adjuster can actually look through all of this and make sure that the, the flow of that experience is, you know, 
is, is, is as good as possible for the policyholder, but also that, that the effectiveness and the timeliness of the responses is, is there. Yeah, and I think that you know, more and more the notion of a, uh, an eight to five job sitting behind a desk is, is going away. Uh, you know, especially as you know, millennials come into the workforce, you know, they're, they're more used to being a, almost a 24-7 type worker wherever they happen to be. So the notion that you could have a claims adjuster, um, you know, good plug for our, our local coffee company, uh, <laughs> you know, at Starbucks, you know, doing your work, being able to get this information, uh, you know, no matter what time of day it is, and be able to respond either through the system or pick up the phone and directly contact these individuals, uh, is huge. It puts the power uh, in the hands of the carrier rather than being a limitation of the tools that they use. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So being able to, uh, you know, be in the Starbucks, the local Starbucks, and have my Surface with me and being able to, to respond to new claims and, and new situations uh, just makes it really easy. So we've actually set this up so that uh, now we have a, an alert so Alexis is actually showing up here on the upper right part of the screen. And by clicking on that, we actually start into the whole situation of you know, understanding uh, not only who Alexis is and, and aspects about her relationship and the policy, but what's actually happened. So all that information, um, is, as we scroll to the, to the right here, all that information that was just collected off the smartphone through the bot itself is now made available to me, Mike, the, the claims adjuster. And as you can see, that you know, the, the photos we took are there. Uh, in this case, you know, we also took a little, uh, you know, little movie, which is kind of cool. And you see that in this corner here of the car, it's, it's starting to identify where the damage is. Uh, down here, we identify the services that the bot requested on behalf of the policyholder. So there's a towing, there's a rental car. We actually even reached out to, uh, to the local repair shop to get things going. And so then, you know, as part of the claims adjuster, I can go ahead and click on, you know, a, a sequence of next steps. Um, you know, as an experienced claims adjuster, I probably know what they are, but this gives you sort of a checklist to make sure that all the various tasks that they need to deal with are, are accomplished in a, uh, in a timely fashion. Yeah, and that just, makes it, that just makes it so much easier for people to get things done. So, you know, if you're handling, you know, 100 claims at once um, and you need to be, t you know, guided through the, the workflows itself uh, for every claim, it just makes it so much easier. And, and, you know, the systems we have in the background are not only the, the, the claim system and the policy admin system, but also the, who's, my, who's my customer, the CRM system. And so all of that, all of that factors into this as well. So we can go ahead and, um, and see the, uh, the, the work that's been queued up for Mike and start to communicate with Alexa directly. Um, because again, as you know, we all know that, you know that accidents only happen during business hours and at convenient times, right? So this is you know, one way that, uh, that the claims adjuster can reach out you know, through, um, through a Skype, uh, through other means to, you know, if, if not actually engage the policyholder at that point, at least touch base. Let them know that they've received the information, it's being processed. Again, you know, the, uh, the cost and effort for the carrier is, is minimal to do this, especially you know, if we've got our mobile agent at the local Starbucks. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a sip between a latte. They're able to reach out, but it makes such a huge difference for the policyholder. And again, I keep you know, hitting upon this theme that you can do this at scale. Mm -hmm. you know, this isn't just for your two best customers. This is, this is for everybody. This is something that you can apply across the board. So here's just an example of, uh, of a communication, you know, just a, a quick chat in between where um, the adjuster says, you know, you know we've, we've gotten notice that you've had an accident, you've had a bad day, we get that, we've all had that. Want to make sure that everything's okay. Uh, we know it's been a while, you know, a few hours since this happened, so presumably, you know, they're home or at work. Uh, and then uh, the policyholder can come back and, uh, you know, just let us know, say, great, thank you, everything is fine. Or at that point in time, if they have some specific questions, they, they can, they can you know, reach out and talk directly. We can also talk about extending this to the repair shop itself, which is, I think, pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, normally we think of carriers as being the, the purveyors of, of writing checks when things go bad. But if you start to connect these into um, to, uh, certified repair shops, you start to have this kind of two-way communication. 
Uh, you can imagine that you know before our, our policyholder you know even gets home at night, the uh, the mechanic has looked at it. They've made some assessments. They have a pretty good idea of whether this is a one day, a five day, or you know we'll call you when it's ready type of situation. Yep. Uh, totally changes the game because now you've got the uh, the adjuster, the customer, and the repair uh, services all on the same page. Yeah, so being able to have a, a video chat through Skype with, uh, with the repair shop themselves um, and, you know, being able to pass this information about the accident or the, the damage on the car over to the repair shop and have them take a quick look at it, come up with an estimate, pass it back to us, uh, that, that just, again, makes it a lot easier to keep the conversation flowing and resolve the situation, uh, resolve the situation for Alexa. Yeah, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of information. We, we, we talk a lot about you know, what kind of information the, the carriers want to present to the customer and which is better sort of left in, in-house. This gives you a much broader palette of the kind of information that you can put forward that are uh, small things to put out there like, where are we in the claims process? Mm-hmm. You know, because it's now easy for you to get that information and then provide that to the customer so that they can feel great. I guess it might take some time, but I know where I am. You know, it's, it's, it's the classic uh, tracking your package. You know it's going to arrive sooner or later, but it sure feels a lot better if you know that it's in, you know, Poughkeepsie today. <laughs> right. So being able to uh, move this on for uh, the, the claim itself and route the claim for approval, um, that can happen very quickly. Getting it over to the, uh, the approval person, in this case, Kevin, um, he actually responds and, and finalizes the claim. Uh, and we move, we move into the final place of this. And the whole purpose is to get Alexa a check so she can actually or t- take care of it with the repair shop and get, get Alexa a check and really finalize things. Mm-hmm. So again, this whole workflow and just making it easy for everyone, and, and especially the claims adjuster themselves, to know what, where things are with, with the claim, uh, know who the customer is, and have this guided experience for them so they can be doing things a lot faster and a lot more efficiently and effectively. That's what we've actually created here. Yep. And so that, uh, that concludes our demo so that we showed, again, in not only the, the, the human side, but also the, the efficiency side. Um, and again, this is something that's, that, for me, you know, is, uh, is really a game changer. I mean, it's, it's super important because in the years that I've been in the business, uh, it's, it's typically one or the other. Yeah. You know, we can spend a lot of money and make our customers happy, or we can save a lot of money and maybe the customers won't be quite so happy. Uh, this is kind of one of the, these rare confluences where, in fact, being able to have higher efficiency and higher effectiveness on, on the back end of your systems also drives you know, customer satisfaction, uh, which as we all know is a, um, is a huge, huge thing these days. Steve, that's, that's, that's great to be able to show how this all, this all combines to, to make not only the, you know, the outcomes for customers much, uh, much more pleasant or as pleasant as possible, but the, the, the work of the, the, the adjusters themselves that much more rewarding. We're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of instances are where auto carriers are literally being overwhelmed by the number of um, claims requests that, that are happening these days. But there's there's also the situation of natural disasters. So during those times, it really helps to be able to take care of people very quickly, um, and and to do it in a very efficient way. But also to you know ease people's pain um, in, in in these types of situations. So if you want to talk to this a little bit around, you know, the focus on customer centricity yeah. and where, where this sort of technology is showing up in, in operations as well, that, that would help. Yeah, because one of the things, you know, when we talk about uh, customer centricity, uh, from the carrier perspective, we, we always think of three different customers. The policyholder, the agents and brokers, or the, uh, the distribution ecosystem, and then also the internal customers, internal operations. And one of the great things about uh, this technology is that there are lots and lots of use cases across everything. So we, we showed one, which was a use case for policyholders in an automobile accident. We talked about how that can be extended to uh, catastrophic uh, situations. Again, the, you know, the tornadoes, hail, fire, these types of things. Um, but when you think about, uh, say, your distribution network, your brokers and your agents, uh, whether they're internal or external, 
they have a need for information 24-7. Again, uh, when an opportunity presents itself, it doesn't always present itself during business hours. Um, it may be in the evening, maybe in the weekends, or, or what have you. Being able to provide them a conduit to have a conversation with a bot to get information that's specific to that account uh, is, is critical. Uh, being able to ask intelligent ask questions and get intelligent responses about the products that the carriers are offering, the details and the nuances, uh, is critical for, for a broker agent to put together a package for a bid. Um, when we talk about internal operations, uh, certainly, uh, you know, with a, you know, call center and these types of things, you know, reducing the the load on call centers by providing, uh, you know, some upfront uh, Q and A, and then the escalation to a real person, but also thinking in terms of uh, new hires, uh, Q and A. How do I how do I start navigating the systems yeah. in my carrier? Um, I'm sure we've all been exposed to one or two carriers that might have some systems that are showing their age a little bit. Uh, these are hard not only to kind of, you know, uh, maintain and manage, but as you get new uh, employees who have to learn to use them, the, uh, the core knowledge around these things tends to get uh, less and less as the years go on. So having these kinds of, uh, of interactions uh, with a bot can greatly uh, you know, minimize the load uh, for existing employees, uh, but also provide a a more convenient, if you will, more convenient and um, you know, easier way for, uh, for the new employees to get information. Yep, absolutely. As we're coming to the conclusion of this, I would encourage you all to reach out to, to Steve and me, um, either through, the, through your account managers um, or through the, the Avanade people. Um, Steve and I are very willing and happy and <laughs> eager to talk to people because we hear this every day. Yeah. We hear the, the, the need for this technology and this change in uh, operational practices uh, on a daily basis. And what we've done over the past six months in, in particular is really bring these two technologies, these two sets of technologies together, whether it's the conversational bots, the claims adjuster capabilities, um, the workflow capabilities. We've really brought this together. So Steve, I, I just want to thank you. It's, it's always a pleasure to get together with you and, and uh, working on this and bringing this to the market uh, is very exciting for us. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you. It's always a pleasure working with you. And I, 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 I can't emphasize enough uh, you know, what you've just said, that uh, it's exciting times out there. Uh, the confluence of technologies and the need in the industry uh, are, are all just kind of that critical junction. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's it's a pleasurable thing to know that we can actually do something uh, that, that helps you know, in so many different ways. So thank you very much for, uh, for having me here today. Yeah. And thank you. Thank you.